Hello my friends, I'm Lucas and you are watching Codemons PL. The work on Yacht Panzer is continuing and as I said in the previous episode, we will paint today. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you how to paint the model to turn this into this. Ok, before we start, click that red button, do me a favor and be my subscriber. Whenever I design what if tank, I wonder what camouflage should be presented on the model. Well, because painting in unpainted steel plates is already cliched and rather everything has been said in this topic, I asked myself where to look for inspiration. It hit me. World of Tanks is a perfect source. After all, in this game we use hundreds of non-existing tanks and various strange camouflages. In fact, I didn't have to search for a long time. To make it easier, I chose the Yacht Panther from my vehicles because of the similar shape and tested various options on it. I found it quite fast because the camo you see caught my eye at the very beginning. Of course, I took it as the inspiration and didn't want to copy it in 100%. I made a print screen on my phone and started to analyze the construction of this painting. There are six colors. The base is similar to Panzer Grey, farther darker almost black, third is rotten green, fourth is mustard, fifth is bright yellow and sixth is very light but not white, more ivory. It looked great to me and this mix of colors was stunning for my monster. Ok. I already know which way to go, the pattern is ready for use, the colors are defined, we can start disassembling the model into prime factors. Such a curiosity, I put the whole model on weight and showed 560 grams, quite good. I used blue tack for some parts so I had to carefully peel it off. What can I say, there isn't rocket science in it and no special skill is needed. Look here for a while. Can you see this huge screw stuck in the middle of the model? This will be my working holder. It holds quite well and the model has never fallen off. Of course, the screw will stay inside forever. I covered all metal parts with a metal primer. It's important to do it as accurately as possible, although the product is transparent and sometimes you cannot see where you have pulled the brush. I didn't use an airbrush on it, so I don't know how it behaves when sprayed. Someone has already done this? Let me know in the comments. All parts were thoroughly primed and then I sprayed a light grey primer all over the model. Straight out of the can, shaken, not stirred. And now some of the factory primer which I made earlier and keep it ready for use. My recipe is XF9 and XF7 in equal parts with a little amount of the thinner added to have easy and smooth flow through the airbrush nozzle. It's always sprayed on the low parts of the model, especially those that won't be painted with camouflage color. So the bottom of the hull, its sides and inner surfaces of the wheels. That's my habit. And we start camo painting. First a dark foundation. From previous arrangements I figured it would be a NATO black. And so I started, but already while painting I realized that it isn't quite what I wanted. It wasn't bluish enough, not like Panzer Grey. So a few drops of blue and the situation changed. Now I could cover the entire hole with the base color. Look at this drive wheel. Well, probably for some it will be unacceptable, but I like such effects. Even if it's covered with mud, it's still worth playing with such details. I also used the last drops of diluted paint to cover the road wheels. I used a darker tone for the next mix. The result was almost black. A bit of thinner, I mean a tap water, and I started to paint dark camo spots. The effect is similar to invisible German camo from beginning of the war. Do you remember the discussions about it on the modeling forums? Yeah, a couple years ago everything was so complicated, but we are having a laugh now, right? Here too, when dry the color is quite blended into the previous shade, but that's how it should be.
Another color now number 3. Before painting I thought slate will fit well but then I changed it for bronze green. It was a good step. I applied it the same way and manner. Damn, where are my gloves? From now all the colors will be brighter and brighter. The first one and at the same time fourth in order is mustard. I was surprised by its good coverage. I thought it would be necessary to paint two coats, but it was nice to see it, how perfectly it came out after drying. Now even lighter but more yellow. It was a mixture of three paints because I had nothing close to what I wanted to get. And finally the brightest, ivory. Ok, I'm back. The camo is almost ready and now all that's left to do is tweak and make it similar to the one in World of Tanks. The most noticeable are flecks of yellow, the fifth color. I mixed the paints again and painted them here and there. The rest of the paint was used to color the road wheel in some specific way. So now ladies and gentlemen I can paint the rest of the model. Let's start with the barrel. I opted for grey anti-heating paint, first of all to calm down the colorful appearance of the whole body and secondly to add the interesting element that will stand out from the hull. The basic shade was XF24 but I found it too dark and I sprayed the barrel with the brighter XF54. Both shades perfectly completed each other as a base and lightening. I was happy with the result. Then I painted machine gun and flag bars with German grey which is as good as black to me. The most important is the polishing and metallic shine which will be done later with pigment and pencil. Yes, I forgot to add light stripes on the flag barrel. It's important to control the amount of paint to not clog the small holes on these parts. <laughs> All this talk about painting and I almost did it myself. The side shields were the second element to contrast with crazy camo on the hull. Here I had no doubts that it should be something in a sandy shade. For this I used real color paints from AK. The base color was lightened with small amount of really light tone. The other side remained in minia shade. Now the side hangers for the shields. The whole thing with the brackets was painted dark brown. I used the brush only, it was faster and more accurate than painting with an airbrush. I didn't want to mask the entire model. Now metallic shine on the weld lines. Those on the hull and those on the hangers. Then I made an acrylic wash with silver and covered all the previous brown painted elements. I fastened it drying with a hair dryer. Well I see that the job is going quite smoothly. We continued to color the next elements and now we will focus on the tarps. There are two, the bigger and more visible one and the smaller one on the engine plate. 
For now I have painted only one color. I left the shadows and highlights for later. Another elements are towing cables. I covered them all over with faded green and allowed to dry before general weathering. And again silver paint for coral detailing. This time I played a bit with the wheels. The teeth on the drive wheels and the surfaces that touch the tracks had to be polished so their metallic color was fully justified. The same for all road wheels. And remember to correct all the places. Surely the brush will come off more than once. The grey paint on the barrel was dry enough and I was sure it wouldn't be torn off by the masking tape. Especially that the whole thing was previously covered with a good metal primer. So I masked the even stripes with masking tape, sprayed gently the paint with an airbrush and after a while I started to peel off to see how the barrel rings of Victory came out. Perfect. Ok, painting is complete. All details were already colored and ready for weathering. I could take care of the markings. For this model I chose a mix of various decals from my collection. Each sticker comes from a different set. These are mainly from Dragon models but of course also those that I bought especially for this project with the names of the vehicles and information cards for the fire extinguishers. The small tactical markings are from Archer. Of course, before applying the stickers I covered the surface with glossy varnish. I'm old fashioned and I prefer not to risk with shining decals. When the stickers were set I covered all of them with the set solution from Microscale which softened them and pressed them exactly into the surface of the model. I let them dry and that was practically all I had to do before weathering started. So my friends, this is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Mega unique cam on paper panzer which is also unique. What do you think about it? If you found something interesting in this episode you can give me a like and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. It's really easy, just hit this red button and you will be regularly informed about the latest videos. I would love to read your comments and suggestions. Let me know what is your opinion about this kit, my work I did on it and painting shown today. For now I would like to thank everyone who visited my channel so far. Also to all my subscribers mega thanks for your help in expanding the channel. I really appreciate it. I hope this group will grow with each new video. By the way take a look at the other movies and open the box series where reviews will appear without any major announcements. In the next episode we will dirtying the model a lot. We'll do all the extra effects, add stowage, ropes, chains and the rest. And that's all for today my friends, see you next Monday, cheers!